Rose a third. Has room. There Rose a third. End zone touchdown, New Mexico State. And the Aggies win the Arizona Bowl in overtime. They'll never forget this night. And uh, this is a special, special time for New Mexico State. Randy, it's the first bowl win since 1960. It's their first winning season since 2002. Last bowl game for this team 57 years ago. You pull this one out in overtime. Describe the emotions you're feeling right now. Well, I'm just thrilled for these kids and this community. Look at these fans that showed up here. I mean, this is an unbelievable day for us. It's amazing. Put into words what this win means to you and this program. You sold these players, these seniors on a vision four years ago, and here you are, Arizona Bowl champions. Yeah, it's, it's just an example of what you can do if you have a group of people that believe in each other. And these kids believed when nobody else did, and this community believes in us now. And this, this needs to be just the beginning for us. This is not the end of the story. This is going to be the beginning of this story. I've been an Aggie my whole life. I grew up in New Mexico, came down here to school back in the 70s. My, I transferred here in 78. That's the year that Aggie Memorial Stadium opened. I came to the first home game here. We played UTEP, beat them. So that was cool. That was a great way to start. I've been an Aggie fan since, uh, since 2004. I remember my first game like it was yesterday, honestly. It was senior night. It was Tony Samuels, NMSU Aggies against, um, against Middle Tennessee State. From that day on, you know, I was like, you know, I want to be involved and I want to go to all the games. And that's kind of what I've done ever since that day. I think overall it's just this just feeling that, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm always an Aggie. I'm a, I'm a lifetime Aggie. I'm always believing that this is the game or this is the year. And I'll be honest, man, there have been some times when it's like it's just kind of the bottom's dropped out and you just feel like, ah, probably not going to recover this year. You know, and, and we've had those. We have. And it's... It's hard to face that, and so it's kind of like that. Come on, Lord, <laughs> give it, give us a hand here, kind of stuff. And uh, so I've never given up, yeah. never given up. It's just, it's just uh, sometimes it's tough. NMSU football always seemed like we could never get over the hump. It was one of those where you'd get amped up when July came, September, and all of that, but it was like we could never get over the hump. My freshman year, I had no, I had no understanding of the history of this university. I didn't, I didn't understand that they were 0-15 when I got here. And when I came and I was playing games, the stands was empty. The stands were empty when we would go play away. They would say harsh things to our coach. They would say harsh things about us. And then I would go online and I would keep seeing, reading the same thing that they would say. And I'm like, wow. That hit me because it kind of reflected me as a child when I was coming up, because I was always an underdog. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to change that. And everybody here got a story just like me. So I was like, it's going to change. Well, I think being an assistant coach here in 2011, I had a chance to spend a year here and get to know the lay of the land, the people. Um, and I just saw great potential here. I just thought, you know, the program had been mismanaged a little bit. If it had the right leadership, vision, that something special could happen here. Uh, it's a beautiful place to live. There's a lot of things to recruit to when you get kids to come here. They haven't seen it before. They're really surprised at how beautiful the school is and what it has to offer. It was my first time seeing mountains and I was just outside the window like, what? I just kept looking out the window and it was a culture shock. And when I saw, when I got here and saw everything, I was like, oh yeah, this is where I'm going. Well, last season was a thrill. You know, they got off to a bit of a slow start, but um, you know, with all the seniors, especially on the offense side of the ball, you knew they'd be able to score points. Um, the concern probably for most of us was 
is the defense going to be able to get stops? And, you know, Frank Spaziani in the defense and a lot of the guys uh, on the defensive side of the ball, um, they showed up and played well. Those last three games, you know, they, they were four and six with two games left. Tyler Rogers got hurt and, uh, you know, we were like, man, it's, are we cursed or something? Last season, we had great group of seniors, great group of seniors. Larry Rose, Tyler Rogers, Darwin Harrington, we had a great group of seniors and they have seen what this university been through and what this program been through. And to see the fire in their eyes and when we got here and it was like, look, we were missing you guys. We can change this around. And when I saw that and how that much they pushed us and how the, just the urgency they had about everything they did, it just made me, you know, want to buy in. It was all in the preparation, you know, we knew what we needed to do. Um, we knew we was going to have to win all the games in the back end of the season and we practiced that way, you know, we competed in practice each and every day and we were just ready on game day and executed and I think that's what uh, allowed us to do that. I just let it all hit me when I go down that tunnel. I didn't know that that game was going to be that crowded. I knew how important that game was. You couldn't hear a pin drop in this locker room. Everybody was locked in. You couldn't hear nothing. It made me feel like everything we worked for was here in front of us. I mean, it wasn't no looking back. You know, in a game like that, a situation like that, I try to uh, focus on nothing more than my assignment. I don't really try to think about anything other than what I need to do, running right out to perfection, getting open and making a catch. And you know, my plan each and every game and just worry about what happens after the game. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think they rose up to big time occasions throughout the season. You know, they were playing for a lot in that South Alabama game, you know, in front of a big crowd, home crowd, a chance to get bowl eligible for the first time since 1960, go to a bowl game, all those types of things. And, you know, we, we relied heavy on those guys last year. And so I think they had been in that position early in the year. They had been in that position throughout the whole entire season, and they came up with some big time plays for us. For South Alabama, you know, you have 25,000 people in the stands for a December home game. And I remember, you know, growing up when I would come to these games in November, those two o'clock games, you know, there'd maybe be 2,000, 4,000 people in the stands. So to see 20, 25,000 people that late in the year, man, it was phenomenal. And, you know, they certainly played a role in that game when, uh, when the Aggies came out and won that game and became bowl eligible. Garvin's going for it all. Batted away. Wow. Austin Perkins bats it away. And for the first time in 57 years, New Mexico State will bowl. The Yaggies are victorious. The crowd was very pivotal. Um, like after the game, when we won that, it was uh, someone, Abuela, came up to me and was like, come here, come here, mijo, I need to kiss you. And they just kissed me on the cheek and she started crying. And then another guy, an old guy, came to me and said, if I die today, I will be happy. I've been an Aggie fan since I was a little kid and I've never seen a bowl game. Thank you. And he, had, he was with his grandson. And that really touched me when he said that. That really touched me. And, and it, it made me appreciate this university, this community so much. Yeah, that, that was, I mean, that was unbelievable. I don't know if I'll ever forget that. You know, that, that was just so cool to see how it ended, see how it came out. And I mean, it was just like all of a sudden kind of time stood still a little bit because there was just this ominous sense of people coming on the field, you know, and you know, just look around and it's like, yeah, this is great and no one's stopping them. I mean, we saw those poor security guys trying to keep fans from getting on the field. It wasn't going to happen, right? And uh, I just remember that. I remember my son finally getting out on the field with me, man, we're hugging each other, just celebrating, taking pictures. And I, it's just, I don't know if we'll ever feel that kind of exhilaration again, because that was the key game, wasn't it? Honestly, we was already ready. We couldn't get to that bowl game even faster. Like, as soon as we beat South Alabama, everybody like got in the film, got in their books. You know, we was texting each other, screenshots, hey, yo, you see this formation they lined up in? Like, everybody was ready. I never, I never seen this much energy from a teammate before. Like, we was ready for that game. Rose a third, has room. There Rose a third, end zone touchdown! State and the Aggies win the Arizona Bowl in overtime. 
there's so much about legacy and memory that comes with that, that final play and just out how Larry was able to score that. I mean, we had, we had all kinds of great plays that game and he had all kinds of great plays, but it's just like the, the perfect timing. And man, the move that he made and just the way that that worked. I mean, I, I remember standing there on the sidelines just kind of seeing it from my angle. I wouldn't be able to see it from up, up, up high. And man, just realizing he got by him, you know, and then it was done, it was done. It was a surreal moment for me when you look up and you saw Aggie Nation. It was like we were at the Rose Bowl, the Orange Bowl, but this was the Aggie Bowl. It felt like the Super Bowl. For us, it did, it really did. And, um, you know, just for the crowd to rush the stadium like that again, it just was so surreal. I, I think it just validated us. It validated the fact that we had a, the right plan. Um, I think as a head coach, it, you know, it validated the fact that, you know, I, I can lead a program and change a culture. You know, changing a culture is hard. You know, it's been ingrained for so long. And, and so changing people's mentality and people's thoughts and visions about a place is harder than it is just to go out and win. And that's what I really thought had changed. I think expectations have changed here now, which is a good thing. And uh, I think our players are feeling that. Coach Morant told us it was us against everybody. And when I said that, I was like, okay, you know, that's, that's something you should say as a coach, you know, motivate us. But when he actually came back with the factual information on is really us against everybody that the Sun Belt was kicking us out. It was really real and you know we developed that mindset to it was just us together, nobody else. And whatever happens on the field and off the field, we gotta stay united. You know, it hasn't been it's been fifty seven years since the football program has received this much national attention. You know, starting with last year, you know, um, after we beat South Alabama, Scott Van Pelt, the votes two minutes and 42 seconds at the top of Sports Center. The program is on a nice high note right now. Now our job is to keep it that way administratively and certainly competitively, but it's wonderful for the program that had been a laughing stock right, worst program in America and Sports Illustrated in the 80s to now, kind of a little bit of the flavor of the month, like man, what you guys are doing is great. The future of the program is expected for them to win now because they can do it, but it's now New Mexico State versus the world. The team's gonna be there and compete, but is Aggie Nation gonna show up? That's the real question. Well, I think we're a very confident group now. You know, our players have done it. And you know, I tell them all the time, you know, I can talk to you guys about winning and I can talk to you about what it takes to win. But somewhere along the line, you've got to experience it, and uh, you can't really put it into words. And you know they've experienced it now, and they've experienced what hard work it takes to get to that level. Now what they're trying to experience is how to sustain it, and that's the real deal now. As hard as it was to get there, and it was hard, sustaining it and staying there, what our players are finding out is that's even more difficult. You know, and a lot of the guys that we have coming back were young. They got reps, but they were young. Losing Larry and Jaleel and Tyler on the offense, especially the leadership, the consistency that you have out of those guys, um, it just provides a whole new challenge. A great opportunity for those young guys now. They, they've seen what it takes, but to get them to rise to that level of preparation and consistency is, is where we're at right now, trying to, you know, we're not 2017 anymore. You know, it's a whole new team. Um, so those shoes have to be filled by somebody or, or collectively, but that's the challenge that we're facing right now. You also have the, the confidence factor that you want to keep high, but you got to keep the successes in check. And, and the thing, the overall message that we were laying down to those guys is, yeah, the majority of them were part of the 2017 team, but this is a whole new team. And the 2018 team hasn't done anything yet. You know, I, I just want to see us continue to play with an edge. You want to play football in New Mexico State, you got to have an edge to you. You know, I really don't worry about how many wins and those type of things. I don't really talk to the team about wins and number of wins because I think all that stuff take care of itself. What I do uh, worry about, what I am concerned about is number one, the leadership on this football team. <clears throat> you know, are we going to have that from within the team again? That's my main concern right now. Not everybody can play football here. And it's not a talent deal. It's a heart deal. It's a character deal. It's a mindset deal. It's a toughness deal. And the other thing is that we continue our identity. You know, our identity is we're the underdog. You know, we're gonna play with a chip on our shoulder. We're gonna play with an edge to us. It's a chip on your shoulder deal. It's a us against the world everybody deal. It's one band of brothers deal. And we gotta bring that edge every day.
You understand? Yes, sir. Because we're playing for more than a football game. You know, we're playing for our reputations. We're playing for respect. It is us against everybody, and that is just the way we want it. That is our strength. Uh, we're playing for this fan base around here. This is a group of hardworking people that live around here that are very loyal to this football program. So, you know, when we go into a Saturday, I really feel like, and I'm trying to get our players to understand, it's more than a football game to us, and, and that's an advantage for us. That's the strength. We know who we are, right? We're the last dog to the ball, we know that, and we're gonna eat out of their ball. That's who we are here.